The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Satan gets scared when he sees you do this. Allow me to tell you one of the greatest truths that you will hear as a believer. God wants you to be humble and Satan wants you to be proud. Remember what Satan said to Eve in the garden. Genesis 3 verse 5 For God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will become like God. Pride. He was literally planting the seed that resulted in him being cast out of heaven. You will become like God. God wants you to be humble and Satan wants you to be proud. Who are you going to follow? If you are a proud person, God is actively resisting you. God is actively against you. If you are a proud person, Satan is endorsing you. However, if you are humble, the grace of God is upon your life. James 4 verse 6 to 10 But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded, be afflicted, and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Satan gets scared when he sees you submitting to God and resisting him. In our spiritual journey, there is a profound principle that at its core shapes our relationship with God. Submission in its purest form is an act of the will, a sincere declaration of, not my will, but thine be done. It is a conscious choice to accept God's sovereignty and to set aside our intentional commitment to yielding ourselves to God's will. To submit to God means to recognize His authority over all aspects of our lives. It requires an understanding that his wisdom and vision for us are far superior to our own. However, submission does not imply weakness or a lack of agency. On the contrary, it is a powerful decision rooted in humility and reverence for God's sovereignty. It requires courage and strength to relinquish control, to trust and to rely on God's divine guidance. As individuals who have been reborn in faith, we consciously opt each day to yield to God, allowing the Holy Spirit to work within us to mold us into the likeness of Christ. God leverages the circumstances of our lives to present us with chances to demonstrate our submission to Him. So I ask you today, have you truly submitted to God? The profound reality is this. As I deliver this sermon to you, there are individuals among you who have yet to fully submit to God. Instead of yielding to God's wisdom and sovereignty, you seek a detailed explanation from Him for every single event that transpires in your life. You desire God to justify His actions to you. Rather than submitting to Him with a heartfelt declaration, God, I may not comprehend why this happened, but I trust in you. This mindset has led some of you down a path where you are angry at God. It may not be something you would openly admit or express aloud, but the anger is there, buried deep within the recesses of your heart. You would never admit it. You would never say it to anyone. Even though you refrain from saying it out loud, this anger towards God lingers in your heart secretly. It lingers within your soul secretly, silently fueling your discontent with God. Yes, you are still going to church, yet in your heart you are angry at God. Yes, you are still proclaiming Christ with your mouth, yet in your heart you are angry at God. 
However, remember this, it is precisely this inner world, the heart in which God is most interested. As the scripture says, man, look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Your internal struggles, your silent questions, your hidden anger, God sees it all. He's not interested in mere surface level compliance, but a deep, genuine submission that stems from trust and love in your heart. This internal discord, this silent battle within your soul is a significant obstacle in your relationship with God. You are faithfully attending church services, singing praises and praying, maintaining the outward appearance of a committed believer, yet this concealed anger in your heart towards God creates a rift. You continue to voice your faith in Christ, but there is a dissonance between what you profess and what resides deep within your heart. But let's not forget, God is all-knowing and ever-present. He knows your heart more intimately than anyone ever could. The scripture reminds us, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God sees beyond the facade. He understands your struggles, hears your unspoken questions, and is aware of the hidden resentment you might harbor. Remember, God isn't merely interested in external expressions of faith or surface level compliance. Instead, he seeks an authentic relationship characterized by deep, sincere submission. He longs for a love that isn't tainted by anger or distrust, but is rooted in a genuine trust in his wisdom and love. He desires a transformation that begins in your heart, for it is within the heart where real change commences. Your challenge, then, is to confront these feelings, to bring them into the light of God's love and grace, and to allow his healing to bring reconciliation, peace, and a deeper faith. Satan gets scared when he sees you submitting to God and resisting him. Submission to God is akin to acknowledging him as our conquering king the supreme ruler of our lives. In the ancient world, conquered subjects would submit to their new king, not merely out of fear, but with the understanding that in this submission, they would gain protection, guidance, and provision. Similarly, when we submit to God, we start receiving the benefits of his reign. This metaphor illustrates the kind of relationship we are called to have with God. A relationship of trust, obedience, and deep reverence. Submission to God and obedience go hand in hand. In the Gospel of John, we find Jesus sharing profound wisdom with his disciples. If you love me, keep my commands. John 14 verse 15. This concise but potent statement provides us with a divine lens to understand the relationship between love and obedience. Adherence to Jesus' commandments indeed reflects our personal morality, yet our Savior urges us to recognize his broader perspective. He prioritizes our acts of love towards others in the depths of our faith in him as significant demonstrations of our obedience. Herein lies a profound truth. Our love for Christ is measured not merely by sentiments, but by our commitment to live by his teachings. In a world where love is often gauged by emotional intensity, Jesus presents a more profound and spiritual perspective. It is easy to claim love for Jesus in purely sentimental or emotional terms. And it is indeed delightful when our love for him is passionate and heartfelt. However, Jesus clarifies that true love must go beyond the realm of emotions. It must translate into action, the action of obedience to his commandments. If you say you love Jesus, prove it by obeying him. Prove it by submitting to him. Prove it by walking in humility. Satan gets scared when a person's heart and actions align with God's word. Our Savior's words challenge us to move beyond a superficial understanding of love. 
Love in its most authentic form is not a passive emotion. It is active, dynamic and transformative. It reflects in our decisions, our interactions with others and most importantly in our commitment to aligning our lives with Jesus' teachings. When love is expressed through obedience, it radiates divine light, impacting not just us but also the people around us. To love Jesus is to follow his path, to embody his teachings, and to share his love with others. It is to make his commandments the guiding principles of our lives. If our claimed love for him does not inspire us to follow his teachings, then we must question the authenticity of our love. After all, as Jesus himself points out, love for him and obedience to him are inseparable. This understanding of love brings forth a transformative power in our spiritual journey when we realize that our love for Jesus is reflected best through our actions and decisions, we begin to live more intentionally. We are inspired to show kindness, to forgive, to live humbly, and to serve others, just as Jesus commanded us. And in doing so, we are not only expressing our love for Him, but also becoming more Christ-like. Our love for Jesus is a reflection of our relationship with Him. It is a testament to our faith, our commitment, and our spiritual growth. When we choose to express this love through obedience to His commandments, we are stepping into a deeper, more fulfilling relationship with Him. We are embracing His divine wisdom and inviting His grace into our lives. In conclusion, let us remember that the measure of our love for Jesus is not in words, but in our willingness to live by His commandments. Let our love be active, dynamic and obedient. As we strive to demonstrate our love through obedience, we will experience the joy and fulfillment of a life lived in Christ's love and under His guidance. Thus, in the spirit of John 14 verse 15, let our proclamation of love for Jesus be not just a whispered prayer, but a lived reality. shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.